on that. Uh, we had employers and alumni and friends of the department here all walking around and the students were presenting their, their posters about their internships or study abroad. Well, this is a, uh, since you're going to be graduating before you get a chance to do that in the fall, this is uh, a much smaller version of that, but we wanted to give you some of the same experience. And Susan Skies has designed this in mind. This is the first ever time we've done a spring uh, experiential education symposium, so we're going to see how it goes, and it'll, I think it's going to be good. Uh, but the whole idea with the experiential education is this is where you get to learn a lot of stuff that you don't necessarily get in your coursework. So a lot of that practical education, the learning by doing, the, you know, the culture of a professional environment, those soft skills that employers always say they want but are sometimes hard to teach in a classroom environment or for the people who do a study abroad often just the experience of going out into another country and seeing how many things are the same and yet how many things are completely different can be pretty life-changing and can uh, you know really shift the path that people take in their early careers so those are, are all uh, really important goals of why we have an experiential education requirement, especially in a practical-oriented college like the College of Ag Food and Environment. Uh, there are, are quite a few people that I want to thank. First of all, thank you all for being here on this, uh, we're going to try this three-minute thesis type of format. I think it will be really interesting and useful. Uh, but a, a big special thank you to our judges today who are here from the outside world. Um, we want to get you up in front of people who have expectations coming from other professional environments. So, uh, Kara Keaton is the, the founder and uh, president, I suppose, of Keaton Communications. And is there anything else I should add about your? I actually graduated with a master's in ag right. oh. but I promised never to be an ag economist if they would just pass me. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so far, that's worked. So far, it's worked well. Yeah. And Sandy Gardner is was is with the governor's office of ag policy and has held a lot of roles in state government. Um, anything else you'd like to say about? No, just excited to be here. I did work here for a while under Dr. Spees and been in some of these classes. So, yeah. And Lisa Collins is our Assistant Dean of Academic Administration, is that correct? So she solves a lot of problems, deals with a lot of crises, on short notice, and yet somehow keeps it all together, and has for years, and saves our bacon in many ways. Uh, certainly want to thank Susan Skies, who has put this all together in a, a relatively short space of time uh, from scratch. And of course, all the advisors, I see plenty of advisors here. Thanks to Willie for capturing this for <laughs> posterity as well. Am I missing anyone, Susan? No, I should be thanking. Is there anything else? Well, the wanna... advisors and supervisors. Yes. Yes, the, yeah. all the people who were your supervisors and your internships, obviously, and deserve a, yeah. a lot of credit. Okay, so this was really Dr. Maynard's idea. So if, if you know are not happy, please... <laughs> the three minute um, thesis thing was right. Huh? The three minute presentation. Yes, part. yes. And um, I came up with this idea before I realized that some of you did participate in the symposium before. And I do appreciate you taking the extra time and effort to do the three minute presentations for this particular experience. Um, one of the reasons we wanted to do it, again, was just so that you could share your experience with the folks in the department and to give you experience in putting together something concise in a quick manner uh, because these are some of the things that you're going to be asked to do whenever you uh, go out into the workforce. And um, as we said, we have three judges uh, that will be evaluating you. We're going to have a first, second, and third uh, place, and we do have um, a prize for those who are selected for those um, different areas. And you volunteer to go first. And what I've done is I've just put your slides up here on the screen, and you can just look at it to open it. And start. Let me start? You may start. <clears throat> Susan uh, Hunter wanted me to let you know that he's running many plays on his way. Right, and he sent me an email, too. Okay. 
you want me to turn the light off up here? Is that better? Mm -hmm. Hello everyone, I am Rhett Moylan and I had the opportunity to have my internship at the University of Kentucky Arboretum and um, I would first like to thank uh, Roger Brown for challenging me to step out of my comfort zone and a little bit of background information on me. I was uh, blessed enough to have my education funded through the University of Kentucky football team and I worked with them for five years up until my last semester of college. So Roger Brown, um, uh, we had many conversations about where I was going to have my internship, and it was very hard to decide, but after weeks of delegation, we were able to decide on the University of Kentucky Arboretum. I was influenced by Tim Woods. He's in attendance. Thank you so much for attending, and uh, he was my mentor, and we talked for many weeks, and I gave him my weekly report, and he gave me some great knowledge and great feedback, and he picked my brain a lot. Um, uh, I was able to dissect and research um, financials, employment, and um, how big of a burden volunteer is for the Arboretum, so that was really cool. Um, I think the main goal for this process was um, demonstrating a positive work ethic through the Arboretum, but with the university, but ultimately for future employment. And I think that's the main thing that I've taken away from this process and that um, my mentor, faculty members, will try to instill in us individuals. So that's a little bit about me and the University of Kentucky Arboretum, that is all. So I'm Mark Wynn. Uh, I have my internship with Forces Financial. I want to thank Dr. Zhang for being my sponsor. Um, so this internship was an educational internship. It, uh, I had class every week, and after class we would have research or we would have homework modules and readings that were due prior to the next meeting, and all that led up to a mock client project, which I was basically the financial advisor for our client. And what Forsters taught me was the importance of saving for the future and planning for the future. And they had a three-step process with savings, life insurance, and investments. So for the first step uh, for savings, they taught us to build a budget based on our client's income and delegate and minimize their expenses to basically manage their money and have an emergency fund for anything that might come up. After we created a budget, we moved on to life insurance, which is a safeguard for um, any anything that could come up, any like death or anything, financial burdens that are present afterwards that are left upon the family. It could be dealt with with life insurance. And through some accounts, such as uh, variable whole life insurance, your premiums that you pay actually are put into sub accounts that can be um, that can accumulate cash value over time, which helps with our third step investments. And basically, that's just the leftover money put into mutual funds, and for that to grow over time. And I put a picture of. Um, one hundred dollar monthly investments at an assumed eight percent annual growth rate, and it just shows how money accumulates over time. And at year four, you're putting in forty eight thousand, you get three hundred twenty thousand for uh, retirement, and that just shows the importance of time value of money, which I've learned, learned in all of your classes, and just further reiterated that. That's my internship. Mark, where are you getting 8%?
I I just told I thought you might have a good place. <laughs> <laughs> Click on slide. There yeah. we go. There we go. Hi, my name is Logan Osborne. My internship was through Sherwin Williams. I'd like to thank my advisor, Roger Brown, for being here today. Uh, a few things. Uh, the reason why I chose Sherwin Williams, I currently work there now, and I was able to get a hold of my manager and speak to him a little bit about the project. And he allowed for a few hours out of each and every day that I work there that I could dedicate specific time towards this project. Now, this time was mainly spent working pre-professionally, uh, any work that helped management, marketing, anything he could possibly help me with. He sat with me each and every day, and we came up with new marketing ideas, which I'll speak about later. Uh, I was actually able to get one of them, hopefully that everything goes well. Uh, the pre-professional project that I did, they actually allowed me to work uh, I had a management position for a blue bucket sales event. And what this event was, it's a four day period in which the concept is you squeeze it all in the bucket, you can save up to this amount. Now, we have this each and every year. And with me being in charge, I, there were certain steps that they gave me a few pointers about that. I had to do, uh, for example, I made a call list for new clients and existing ones. The, the whole point of this entire sale is to not only draw in new customers, but to also keep them. Uh, we had a luncheon, a breakfast, that was one way to draw them in. I had to call this. Um, one of the hardest things for me to do was inventory. That's one new thing I had to pick up on. Uh, building up a full inventory plus more because of the event, make sure everybody gets what they want. Uh, the, another goal of the project was to uh, not only take, take market share, but keep it as well from companies such as PPG, Pittsburgh Paints, Pittsburgh Paints, Lowe's, Home Depot, and plenty more. And uh, the marketing goal for the sales event was a sale of 10000 which we did hit with my first time ever doing this event. I was able to get that. And the marketing idea I was talking about earlier that I spent day after day with my manager, Brian, of course, was that the, if you don't know, you were able to sell paint in gallon and five gallon pails. Uh, there's a discount between the two. I was actually able to get a hold of him and his manager to possibly pass uh, pallet discounts. So if this goes over, this would be absolutely wonderful for me, and they've already offered uh, future professional work. So this was my internship. Thank you. experience was going to Argentina this summer or this uh, spring break. I gotta say it was an amazing experience and I highly recommend every agricultural student to do some sort of experience like this. So I just want to go ahead and thank Dr. Tyler Mark, Dr. Todd Davis for this experience. I mean without them you probably wouldn't have known what we were doing the whole time. If I wanted to you know uh, wrap up my conclusion of my two weeks experience, it would take too long, so I'm just going to do my experience on the horseback riding that was part of our leisure time activities. Uh, first off, the culture shock immediately hit right as you land. Everything's different. It's, the people are different. The way they dress is different. I mean, it was just a complete shock to me. Uh, I've never gone so far away from home before in my, in my life by myself without my parents with me, so this is a new experience as well. I went down with knowing two people, but came back with 16 friends. So I was pretty happy about the experience. Luckily, we had a great guide, Matthias Nardi, who unfortunately is not here, and two great 
experienced professors. I just want to thank y'all both again. They bought, they taught us both educationally and culturally things that we had never known before. Before I get started, I just want to say uh, highlight a couple of fun facts that I learned down there. I learned that 60% uh, of Argentina Argentinians do not pay taxes, so which can also can con uh, contribute to why their economy is not the best right now. Another fact is that the United States has 324 million people. Argentina only has 43 million people, with this, about the same si uh, same amount of land too. Uh, fun little experience I uh, saw that I actually got to see the president leave the White House, but their White House is actually pink, so I thought that was pretty funny. All right, so during our two-week stay, like I said, we had to go horseback riding in the Argentine countryside. First off. I've never been horseback riding, so this is a little new experience for me. I was terrified at first, but after I got on the horse, it was it was easy. It was easy riding. Uh, so we actually traveled to the wine region, the Mendoza Valley province. And I'll tell you what, though, our trip was nothing short of easy. The bus ride there, it was atrocious. It was 3,000 feet on an old tour bus on the side of the mountain. I mean, it was, I didn't think we were going to get there, but we did. But when we got there, I'll tell you what, the view was amazing. Over 1,500 acres of untouched pasture land on the side of a mountain. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the place we actually went horseback riding was called Quebrada de los Condores, roughly translated to the Canyon of the Condors. Uh, fun fact about condors is they have a wingspan from 6 to 9 feet, and they actually do not flap their wings up, uh, up that high in the altitude, they actually find the warm wind currents and just glide up in the mountains and then fly down to their prey. Fun fact. Um, Alright. Alright. Uh, once we got going, uh, we actually, one of the pictures here, we actually passed around the customary leather bota sack with water in, you know, it was fun. It was an experience I've never uh, done before. Uh, on the far right, that's actually just one of the views we one of the views we got to look out on top of the mountain. And a picture does not do it justice. Just look, just being there on a horseback, on a horse, it was an experience in all in itself. And I just want to say that this experience has really opened my eyes to a lot of things culturally that we do differently that than they do, or vice versa. But it was experience, like I said, I wish everyone can go out and experience. And that was my trip. Today I'll be talking about my study abroad trip to Argentina. Growing up, my dad always told me if you have the opportunity to travel, do it. He lived in Japan, France, Spain, and South Africa. Well, that dream became a reality in the spring of 2017, my senior year. This was my first time traveling out of the United States, and honestly, I didn't know what to expect. My first order of business was getting a passport. These aren't hard or expensive to get. They just tell you not to wait till the last minute. Uh, 
Well, I waited, I waited until the last minute and had to pay a hefty fee to get my passport expedited. Next, I had to book a flight. I'll be the first to admit, booking a flight was easier than I thought. All you have to do is pick a date and time, give them your credit card number, and you're on your way. This being my first international flight, I was extremely nervous for what the nine-hour flight had in store. Turns out, flying isn't too bad. You really get a new perspective on life when you're flying high above the clouds. Nine hours later, we were about to touch down in the Buenos Aires International Airport. The nerves start to hit me. I'm about to be in a foreign country where no one speaks the same language. This is where my journey begins. Visiting a foreign country taught me to live in the moment. Traveling teaches us to unplug, explore, and discover ourselves. For example, never in a million years did I see myself horseback riding, yet alone horseback riding through the Andes Mountains. Everything about this trip taught me to live in the moment. Whether that was talking to farmers, businesses, uh, walking around where no one spoke English, or even trying new foods. Everyone on this trip knows I was the pickiest eater out of everyone. You also learn to roll with things. All trips don't run smoothly. For example, the first time we tried to make it out of Buenos Aires to a new city, we actually got stopped and detained by what I would describe as Border Patrol. They, they wouldn't let us through, and at first I was scared, but it actually turned out to be a whole new adventure in itself. We even had to deal with protesters outside of our hotel. You'd think that'd be a negative part of the trip, but it was actually quite interesting to watch. After seeing that, it really made me appreciate and thankful that I live in the United States. This trip truly did give me a new perspective on life. Nothing changes, nothing changes the way you view your own life, like seeing other people live theirs. I was able to experience international flying, different languages, try new foods, and learn a new culture. My trip to Argentina was arguably the best experience of my undergraduate career at the University of Kentucky. I'd like to thank Dr. Tyler Mark and Dr. Todd Davis. Kentucky itself is not just a stereotype. 
The work I did was far from glamorous. Like many internships or college jobs, I was bussing tables, mopping floors, tending to dishes. I cleaned up spilled drinks and messes made by toddlers. I did a little server management here and there. I worked a fantastic Easter brunch, and the organization for that was impeccable. I learned about customs and cultures and how they're different from our staff and our hotel guests. We had visitors from Johan, we have visitors from France and Sweden, and they all kind of come there to do things that are involved in Kentucky, and it makes it really interesting. The truth is, my internship made me the money I needed to support myself and pay for this semester of college. I'm still working there, even though tonight I wasn't offered some kind of crazy position when I finished my internship, but I found myself bragging about this state that I'm calling home. The university's campus, Red River Gorge, all these places that I've been able to visit over my semesters. Focusing on the two photos in the slide, the one I took last week walking home from school, and I thought it was really gorgeous to stop and think about the fact that we have such a beautiful campus and we live in such an awesome state. And then the second one is where I spent most of my time, that's our bar down in the Griffin Gate. And that's where I get to entertain my guests that are there for horseshoeing competition and things like that. So it truly was a unique experience. I didn't necessarily learn business things or you know, um, more about agriculture, but I was able to learn how awesome the state is that we live in and how I can share that with my guests. So from, not, from now on, this has really became my home. And it's an opportunity that I can actually tell folks about this great state that we live in. Uh, this, I went on the Argentina this education abroad trip uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is the first time out of the country for me, first time on an airplane, first time for a lot of things for me. So I'm going to tell you about some of those experiences that I got to experience for the first time down there. Number one was the culture change. Uh, it was really neat to see how the culture differed down there than what we have here in the U.S. and how different things could be. Uh, with, also on our, our leisure activities, we zip line. That's the first time I've done that. I've turned many people down to go zipline. <laughs> you know, they, I don't know how y'all got me on a zipline, but you did somehow. White Rodder happened the same way. My aunt goes nearly every week, every weekend in the summer. She offers for me to go every week, and uh, I somehow always managed to get out of it. <laughs> and uh, but I went went this time. It's a great experience. Uh, like I say, the, the biggest experience change for me was the culture, and. Uh, you know, how different they, they eat later, uh, how they just function a lot differently than we do in the U.S. Uh, that was probably the most interesting thing. The one big thing that I wasn't convinced about going until Dr. Mark talked to my dad that convinced me to go was flying. I said five or six years ago that I'd never get on a cruise ship and I'd never get on an airplane in my life. Well, I've done both now, so <laughs> there's no excuses. Uh, that was a big a big change of mode of transportation. It's a lot faster, but you can drive to Argentina. I did look that up. <laughs> it, takes, it takes three or five days, but I can get there. So, uh, the flying wasn't too bad, but if I've got an option, I'm going to drive next time. And, uh, so, I don't know how you all want me to go, but Dr. Mark, you did good. You talking to my daddy? And uh, he pretty well threatened to finish my life that I better be on a plane in March. And uh, so that was that was probably the biggest thing, was all the first time things I did. Uh, got to see a lot of neat stuff down there that I hadn't seen before, the wineries, the different types of farms, uh, the uh, planter factory that a couple students really liked. That was pretty interesting to see how they do things differently than we do down there. Uh, overall, I'll just say this is a great trip that everybody should get a chance to do on some type of study, study abroad, like Austin said, before they leave. And uh, that's pretty well the trip. Summed up with all the new cool things I did for the first time. <laughs> it's already like getting to you. I had some lady trying to sell me a thousand dollar fire extinguisher. I heard that. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> Thank you. 
opportunity to actually do three experiential opportunities um, this semester. However, I think agribusiness in Argentina was one of the most interesting. So when I entered college three years ago, if somebody would have asked me if I was going to study abroad, I would have told them no. I was going to study agriculture and besides, what would I do abroad anyways? Little did I know the opportunities that would be presented to me with the Agribusiness in Argentina Study Abroad program. Before entering the class, I couldn't tell you where Argentina was on the lab, no, sorry, let alone about their agriculture. Through taking the class, however, I got a crash course in Argentina's massive agricultural industry, political turmoil, and unique history. I then departed for the country and spent the past couple of months learning about. The two weeks I spent there felt like a month. Every day was crammed full of adventures and learning and cultural experiences from sunrise to sundown. On our trip, we were able to talk with companies that own hundreds of thousands of hectares and visit wineries, farms, government institutions, and so much more. We got to zip line through the mountains and over rivers, go horseback riding through the Andes, and ride in death-defying taxis. We did more things in two months than I could describe in 30 minutes, let alone three. And those two weeks taught me more than the majority of my college career did. It allowed me valuable insight into the real world, real companies, real success stories. I got to see successful U.S. farmers interact with successful Argentinian farmers. It was amazing to see how both were able to learn a lot from each other. Unfortunately, the trip, like all good things, had to come to an end, and I was thrown back into the real world without really knowing how my experiences would impact me. That became clear to me pretty quick, however. Our flight came back in on Sunday night, and on Monday morning, I had an interview with a potential employer. As soon as I walked into the interview on Monday morning, we immediately connected by talking about my experiences abroad. He was so curious about the country that had had such a huge impact on American agriculture, and I asked so many in-depth questions about it. Before I knew it, we had talked for an hour about my trip without be even beginning the interview. A week later, I was offered the job. This proves that my trip influenced me in ways that I could have never imagined. It allowed me to connect with people in a unique and memorable way, and allowed me to speak intelligibly about agricultural matters I wouldn't have been able to prior. I'm so fortunate to have gotten to go abroad on the trip, and I'd like to thank Dr. Mark and Dr. Davis for allowing me the opportunity. About who? About the first three top present presentations. Want to step out? Yeah, sure. Exactly. Okay. 